podcast. Welcome to the almost perfect podcast, a celebration of fuck ups, failures, and falling flat on your face. This is a podcast that believes you can learn from experience, but that experience doesn't have to be your own. Ha, I'm but perfect and I'm a functional fuck up. Let's learn from somebody else's mistakes. And today we are learning from Zama Dlamini. Now, Zama is a designer slash artist and also a DJ by the name of Zero. And uh, yeah, we chat about <laughs> art and design and DJ. We chat a lot about music. We chat about how Zama keeps her childlike wonder. And yeah, just a really, we chat about the new Jackie Extremes. It's, it's a really, really fun chat. But uh, before we get into the chats, I do want to ask you guys a favor, please. I'm trying to grow the audience of this motherfucker. You know, I've been doing it for like five years now, so I figure it's probably about time that people started hearing it. Like other people, other than you. You know, you're cool. I dig you. Thank you. Uh, but I have a feeling that more people than the current listenership could get value out of this. So, if you like this podcast, if you enjoy this conversation that you're about to hear, please share it. Just like, tell someone about it. Share it on social media. Maybe WhatsApp it to somebody. You know, fucking, I don't know. Write the, write the URL down on a piece of paper. Tie that to a bird's leg and just let that thing get delivered wherever it's going to go. But uh, I would really just, I would really appreciate that. Like, thank you. Thank you ahead of time for doing that. And if you really, really dig the podcast, you can subscribe to it on whichever platform you're on at the moment, and you can leave a review. I think you can do that on Spotify and Apple. So that apparently is helpful. I don't actually know if it is, but it lets other people know that, hey, this is a real thing. So please do that too, if you can. And what else? What else do I need you to do? Oh yeah, there's Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash almost perfect for a little as a dollar a month. Uh, what else? <laughs> How many other calls to action can I actually fit in here? Oh, fuck. I'm on TikTok now. Yeah, I caved. You either, you know, you live long enough. Like, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself buckled to fucking peer pressure and societal pressure. And just going on the platform that everyone tells you to fucking go on. Because apparently that's where, you know, comedy lives now. So, Yeah. I'm trying that out. Almost perfect, Bob. But you can find me on fucking TikTok now. That's that's a, that's I guess all the shilling I need to do for now. And we can we can have a little chit chat. This week's been interesting. I've been updating my CV. I've been looking at jobs in Cape Town and Joburg, and in other countries, uh, but mostly remote stuff for the other countries. And I've been using ChatGPT to help me with my CV, to give me some guidance and maybe spruce up a couple sentences here and there. Uh, like just the bullet points and that, you know, like, fuck, I'm, I hate selling myself. Like, that's the thing. I'm really bad at like being like, well, perfect. Well, not but perfect. Like, insert my real name. I, it's Darren. You know, it's Darren. Everyone knows it's fucking Darren. Anyway. <laughs> like, Darren Scott is a blah 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 who's you know achieved all these fucking things I hate that shit but chat GPT is fucking good at that shit digs going like lying basically it's like oh yeah improve traffic by 25% blah 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 it's like I appreciate uh, your faith in my work but that didn't actually happen so yeah you gotta <laughs> you gotta <laughs> you gotta coax it a little bit you gotta edit you gotta work but there's some advice for you if you haven't actually thought about, you know, how to use ChatGPT for yourself yet. It turns out there's quite a few, like we chat about it in this podcast, actually. There's quite a few interesting ways. There's quite a few cool ways to utilize AI at the moment. And I know I've been a bit of a Luddite with all of it, but considering how most tech innovations tend to become prisons for us, uh, yeah, like skepticism is warranted, but... Yeah, I've been experimenting with ChatGPT. I don't know if I had, like, I'd used GPT-3 in the past for copywriting stuff. Like, very helpful in terms of <laughs> laying, like, fleshing stuff out in the beginning. And then you can just uh, make it better, I guess. But now, ChatGPT is a lot better at that stuff. It's still, I don't know, it's, it's fucking useful. It really is. It's, I think, yeah, like, 
if you're not using it, you are going to be left behind in certain aspects, you know, because in terms of productivity, it helps a lot. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we do chat a bit about all of this in the podcast. So I'm not going to jibber jabber for too much longer. We're going to be kicking into it in a couple seconds, actually. Uh, so I need to let you know once again that this podcast is brought to you by you, which means that you can support it by going to patreon.com forward slash almost perfect or you can just go to the almost perfect website almostperfect.co.z that out the way here comes the almost perfect podcast with zama Lamini. how are you living zama pretty well how are you living not too shabby i've actually been using a uh, chat gpt to update my cv today so nice I figured you know like instead of worrying about the robots taking my job so let's use the robot to get me a job just live in harmony with the robots yeah i mean we were beyond like we've jumped the shark like we're done like, it's happening it's happened it's happening <laughs> <laughs> still um yeah i think that's a it's good it's good good job <laughs> you use ai though like yeah. in some of your work yeah, um, actually work like put us onto it because they thought it might be a cool tool to for like referencing or ideating or creating like an element of like a graphic or something. And it's pretty cool. Turns out I know its language sort of. So we get along really well. And so you're talking about you use Midjourney, right? Yeah, for like image creating and sort of when I use it for personal stuff, it's kind of to sort of punch in some words and I'd have no expectations. I'm just like, what you got for me, guy? And then the robot gives. And then from there? And then, yeah, I mean, if it's cool, then I like do versions or whatever. If not, then I'll try again and then I'll share it. And usually I'll... What do you mean by do versions? Because when you punch in the words, it gives you four versions of what it, it thinks you might want. Okay. Um, And then you either have options of like either making ping one like making it bigger because they're all like little thumbnail vibes okay um so you either make it bigger or um do a version of one of the four so like version one two four or both if you wanna until you're happy with what it's looking like you can also do remix versions where you say version and you add words or like take some away so it like changes i don't go that in depth because like i said we seem to get along pretty well <laughs> um it kind of just usually gives me what i want like first try or second try if i'm having a bad day <laughs> um and then if it speaks to me i'll like save it and give it a name that feels right and then i'll share it on my page and it's its own separate page that you've got because you're actually yeah, also my main art page is baby pink ice cubes and then her page is pink baby ice cubes her page so you're my ai daughter so yeah, that's their creation yeah exactly it's like kind of dizzy collaborating with the robot and i feel it feels like a separate thing too but it's really a fun space to collaborate not just collaborate but ex Express and experience my style and my vibe and my, like the concepts visually that I'm about. And obviously aesthetic is the first one, but like in like a minute, because that's how long it takes to generate like the work. The but you're also someone who creates a lot of different stuff, like in reality as well. Like you're, yeah. you're a designer by trade. Like you're a DJ, you also like do poetry. And crochet you, things. <laughs> you crochet things. Like, yeah, you're always actually creating stuff. So like I wash dishes sometimes. Also, sometimes. Make them clean. Is that a is that a creative process? I for feel you? like it is, yeah. Like I I've managed to make it a like Zen process, you know, like in a thing of like I'm going to like experience this and enjoy, you know, the warm soapy water and all of that shit. I can get there, but I don't find it to be that creative. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. How's it creative to you? No, it's just like, like it's a process in that uh, they're dirty and then they're clean and then you can listen to music while you do it. <laughs> sure. So it's, it can be pretty fun. It's always like a hack, but then you do it and it's like, actually, that wasn't that bad. And now they're all clean and it's nice. Yeah. So designing, how did you get into that? Uh, through art, because I knew, I, like, I kind of figured my, what I'd study through a process of elimination, uh, what I wouldn't study when I was in <laughs> high school. Which high school did you go to, by the way? Girls High in Maritzburg. 
Oh snap! Okay, mm-hmm. I didn't realize you were a PMB girl. But did like, you go there too? No, I say oh, I don't know why. Like I say oh snap. No, everyone's no, always. Like, yeah, I was just joking. You're not the only one. Like everyone is like oh you too, and I'm like oh fuck, that's what that actually means. Yeah, like, yeah. But for some and reason, it's like a, it makes sense though. You're just like yeah vibes like <laughs> well, yeah yeah one of those it's just always something afterwards mm. but it's uh yeah I've, I've been using golly lately gee golly whiskers mm, exactly dude that's the stuff <laughs> that's the the jiggy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so i went to ghs and then i was gonna either go into sciences or arts through like graph design or like go to pretoria for bsc which are both good options yeah i mean one of those like leads to you know having a nice big house and you know potentially both of them i don't know too many uh (laughs) artists with big house i mean how people do you know really there are billions of people in in the world so yeah but i met like quite a few of them like decent sample (laughs) size in the creative industry (laughs) like yeah okay um i don't know it depends what the house is made of i guess but I kind of felt like doing art all the time would be more fun than as much as I enjoy like psychology and stuff like that. I still get to experience and learn about it and have a brain the whole time. <laughs> so I feel like that's something that, you know, I wouldn't have the qualifications, but I'm definitely engaging with it all the time. Um, and I get to do art. Well, like I like, love like colors and shapes are like my favorite thing. So living in that is living. I've kind of noticed that, especially like following you through your various different like Instagram accounts. Like you are very much into your like just bright and pastel colors, I guess. Like your pinks, your like, yeah. Lately it's just been like uh, cool colors or like mostly like uh, the purples, the blues and pink will yeah. never die. But also and green has been cool <laughs> yeah and then pops of like warm colors but just like cool water earth trees vibes <laughs> love it but like yeah has that always been your kind of vibe what do you mean like pastel vibes yeah uh, i guess so yeah always definitely resonated and also sometimes like bold colors like yeah. um the primaries like red green uh, red blue and yellow like I love that like combo like it reminds me of like jungle gyms and like swings and yeah just literally childhood stuff and like uh, those letter things that you stack on each other like it's just fun blocks, yeah yeah I love like primaries as well always um yeah and do you do- colors in general yeah but like I guess it does harken back to like you know childish days and teenage days a lot of your like kind of like style and that like a young teen vibe like is that intentional is it also because you work with mr price and do designs for them for that sort of stuff or do you do stuff for that or am i like i do do stuff for kids like we work in my team we work over like all ladies stuff so accessories as well and sleepwear kids moderate young vibes um but i don't feel like it has anything to do with the my personal like I don't know, visual explorations. Um, Cause it's usually, I'll either like sort of have a, like an idea for a concept and then I'll like sort of try to see what it looks like. Or I'll just like draw a random thing that I want to see like come to life. Sure. And it's the kind of thought behind it comes later. And, oh yes, the actual question that you asked <laughs> though, I do feel like it's uh when I was younger, I'd always hear like old people complaining about like how like youth is wasted on the young, how like kids don't know how good they have it. Yeah. So I think I was like seven or something and I like made a decision to like not lose my kidness, nice. whatever that is. I was like, I'm a kid right now. So like retain. So Peter Panning at heart. Hey? Yeah. But like <laughs> intentional. Yeah. Like just because I was like, I don't know what, what they lose, what happens in the process of like growing old, but I'm just going to like, whatever my mindset is right now, I'm going to try like relate to it forever. And it worked. So that's what you're seeing. That's dope. Cause like, I sometimes like imagine like Lizzie McGuire would dig your stuff. <laughs> like, 
I'd know the, 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 the name, but oh, I don't. Damn. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah, I, don't I grew get up the on reference. KTV. It's Hilary Duff's like character that had like the little like cartoon like girl come up on the screen like version of her. It was oh, that cute sounds as amazing. Fuck. I feel like yeah. I missed out on a whole like portion that I. Oh, you, you should just like watch it now. I like, I really think might will. actually. There's, I definitely resonate with cartoons. There's a great a movie lot. where she like goes overseas and sings and like oh, it's wonderful. I think and I'm gonna really, enjoy like, that. You'll I'll enjoy check it out. Yeah, like, yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I really like. I feel like that translates like my cartoon world and like my music and my visual aesthetic, my poetry, even yeah. like me, my like style, personal style. Because life is an animation. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, what did you grow up watching? If you if you weren't watching Lizzie McGuire, what? <laughs> the one the one show um early days lots of mary poppins oh nice like, i remember that yeah basically I I brainwashed VHS, myself yeah. with the vhs <laughs> yeah. can't even say how many times i watched that never got old watched it again like a year ago still perfect dragon ball z oh fuck yeah sbc2 hoppers yes, yes. oh <laughs> my word just made the days all the better like getting back from school, you're just sort of pepping your stride. I liked it because it was after like extra murals as well. So you could go to like whatever, like sports practice or sure. whatever you had like after school. Yeah, yeah. Then, like, it's definitely, it gives you time. Like Dragon Ball Z is kind and generous like yeah. that. Like you can get your life and. And so, so you never really missed much until you did. Like you just missed that one episode where something happened. <laughs> like it's Sure. <laughs> Like sometimes my parents would uh, come back and want to watch the news or something crazy. Those were like, yo, that was wild. <laughs> I hated that. Um, but Yu-Gi-Oh, um, someone actually yeah, recently yeah. put me onto that again. And on, it's on Netflix now. So I put it on and the thing was starting. I was like, oh my God, this is like the nostalgia, the excitement. Because the Egyptian vibe is yeah. very like strong in that. And I'm all about that too. It's also like the crazy, crazy like opening. Like I think the fucking wild. like the first episode wild. is just it. <laughs> If I remember correctly, like they have Dutch's grandfather. In yes, the and he has to go <laughs> fucking play this game. The game and like, yeah, it's super crazy. It's beautiful. I've only watched like the first episode, um, but I'm very excited. <laughs> also, his transformation, how drag it is. Like, it's a very oh, yeah. like camp. But that's what like I love about anime. Like, anime is hella camp a lot of the time. Ca- like, yeah, I guess. Hey, I guess the that's good guys and the villains. Like, true, depending, especially like, the villains. Yeah. most of the time. I love that. It's yeah. so exciting. So yeah, I guess that's that's what comes to mind mostly. Those are my favorites from when I was a kid. I feel like there's some that I'm like forgetting, but you know. I mean, I'm imagining so because your styles are exactly like Dragon Ball Z. But <laughs> you, uh, Adventure Time has influenced me in my adult years, but like that's you asked when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm still young. Um, so Adventure Time like is it just fully consumed that gobble gobble. And is animation something you'd ever want to get into? Rick and Morty is wow. perfect and amazing. Gets a bit crazy sometimes, but what are you going to do? <laughs> something I'd want to get into. I don't know. It's just like all the, sometimes I find like just doing one frame is like a lot. So yeah. you're doing like 10,000 or how many, it just, it's just like, oof. But I mean, there's other avenues too, because you can do character design. I'm sure, but I feel like I'd prefer like getting into music more than that, which is what oh, I'm like to try, like doing. Yeah, 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 like bebop. Oh, damn. Um, I okay. bought like myself there, a There we go, pad. damn works better than Snap. Cool, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, I'm sure you'll have we'll, plenty. We'll right? figure it out. We'll yeah. get there. We'll try different ones. I'm um, yeah. very excited about that. Yeah, so I would like you tinkered buy? a little bit. what did you buy? Ableton, a push two. Okay, I don't yeah. know quite what it's that is, like, but I know uh, like big boy like with chaos like, pad vibes, like sixty four buttons. I haven't right. figured out how to use oh. it yet. Oh, Pretty wow. good, but I um I've tinkered with music a little bit. Like twenty seventeen, I think it was like on FL Studio oh, and cool. made like a little like thirty second like loop, and it was so fun. Like I really got into it. It was like a jam and like nothing I'd ever heard before in my life. But I it was like. Very James Bond, but like Egyptian and like trap music nice. at the same time. 
I used to do stuff like that with like my Samsung, like D500 when I was younger. Like you, you could make like your own ringtone. Sure. And you could like That's make songs. Cool. Like that was like, like Garage Band. Yeah. Or Garage Band. Um, so I, like, I mean, I love that. I like with DJing and getting to, you know, mix stuff, mash up. It's so fun. And just like sound gets me so excited and such a beautiful thing. So. And you also like a really like diverse range of music, which is cool. Cause yeah. like, I like, yeah, Shazam the fuck out of your sets. Like, it's fun. You've got like really good taste, but taste. also, yeah, like whenever we chat, like we're always connecting on like so many different like types of artists and that. So yeah. It's, and even just not just uh, in music, but in just expression, I guess, like with the wrestling and the drag and like <laughs> all that stuff. It's yeah, fun times. But I guess where I was going with that is just what's been your like musical journey. So. Like when you were younger, what were you listening to? How'd that go? Like the you... first thing that came to mind was Usher. <laughs> I don't know how he did that. That's so funny. Like I remember I think it was his confessions album. <laughs> I think I had like the actual C D and he had the lyrics in the sleeve and I was just like Yeah, that's how you knew the lyrics to songs back in the day. And I'm like, Did you gotta have your lyrics in the sleeve? Like how is everyone not doing this? Like I was always so disappointed when someone didn't have I was like, Come on that's an opportunity missed. Like I want to really. Get yeah. I think your that's music. just like a slight, like cost cutting thing. Yeah. I mean, I get it, but it's just no, really nice it's, to have. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> it's yeah, sure. Um, I always like when I have mixes up on SoundCloud, which I have a SoundCloud for my like mixes, I'll have a track list we'll in there. Link, Cause I always like appreciate, uh, well, yeah. knowing what's going on, you know, love clarity. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I sort of really got into that. Um, when I was a kid, I, my father liked ABBA, so I kind of like dig the vibes. I thought it was pretty cool. Would listen, like, um, get into it. And then a bit older, like Taylor Swift's Country Days. Oh, snap. I well, fucked with her. That's not a then. snap in that, like, I actually agree, but yeah. like, okay. <laughs> Like sure. I'm a hater, like, but I get Wait, it. Back, I get like, it. The first album, like White Horse, uh, and all that. I, I was probably in high need to just actually it. listen to it now, like, because like I love country, and I get that Taylor's good. I just don't like her, like as a person. Okay. I don't know her. Yeah, like, yeah. You just don't vibe. Though. I just yeah, okay. like that happens. You know, she seems just like uh, I don't know, just very calculating. I feel like I'm like screaming into the mic. Do you think I'm like talking? At a volume that's reasonable, like fairy, like, yeah, no, like it's almost like you're whispering. No, no, I just realized how loud I was talking. I was like, oh my god, what the heck? Oh, I've got you in my headphones, so don't worry. Like, um, don't and fair enough, dude. You don't have to. I know. You what, what did you never have to even <laughs> listen to her? I don't listen to her in so much now. I don't hate her. Um, but I'm just like she lost it for me when she stopped doing country. What was the appeal? song that I can? Sorry, what was the appeal with Tay Tay? Mm -hmm. Um, it was the stories. Okay. Very like uh, visionary that is country. music. Yeah, country in general. Yeah, yeah. They'll really like tell you a story. Like, um, but also I was very into at the same time Florence and the Machine okay. and Regina Spector. Yes. Because it's like poetry, it's stories, it's surrealism, it's like experimental, like sonically. Do you ever get and into Cat conceptually. Power? Who? Cat Power. No. Oh, you should. I think, I think you should just send me all these things. Yeah, no, just we'll, whenever it comes to mind, just send it. That's like I'm gonna listen back to the edits and just be like, okay, let's. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. It's endless. Um. Uh, so yeah, I like Florence and the Machine and Regina were like the main, I guess, for a long time. Like, uh, for my transition, late high school, early varsity, and they were like all I listened to for a long time. And then like into the more electronic stuff and that, which you. Yeah, I think it was like uh, the guy I was dating, I guess he wasn't into electronic, but like just a bit more experimental, more like selection vibes. And it got me into like, you know, there's more music besides Regina and Flo. Um, <laughs> Who knew? And I though went like wilder, like my taste is quite like... Eclectic. Yes. <laughs> Um, but also like, I love like classical, like sounding stuff, like a good piano, like orchestral, like verse, but I also love like garage, industrial, like wreck my brain, <laughs> chains and clanks sounds. Yeah, that's what I want to, like, I can't like really stand like trance and that sort of stuff, but like, just give me garage, give me like something fast and heavy, like give me gom, like give me like just yeah, like dude, fucking like just me gom always. like loud and noisy and just like 
let me sweat and fucking you know just mash my face off basically (laughs) yeah exactly um and i love it when it's like considered it's like crazy chaos but it's still considered yes that's why i love jackie extreme so much i see you've been posting a lot of jackie yeah i'm not gonna stop (laughs) that's 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 it. That's just where we're at, right? Yeah, now. I'm sucked in fully. You guys are coming with me, um, but it's just so melodic and so musical and so like. I think she's a genius. Like, I mean, I think a few people are Nicholas Jar, Sega Bodega. Nicholas Jar is an electronic so much, well. but like Sega is more electronic, but also very experimental. All of these people, I love like with even in a single song, I want you to take me to like different like soundscapes and like. I, I'd hope that's my vibe. That's what songs are like. I don't like, I don't listen to that much house because it can be quite repetitive and yeah. like no, like, shade to beats house. where everything is just like the same and then yeah, it kicks it in the next like to the next one. To the same song. And then it kicks like, into the next one. Yeah. And, then it kicks, and it's, it's just, yeah. It can't be me. You cut on the eight, motherfucker. Come also, on. Also, like, well, I, on the one, but yeah. Like, I don't know, it's something, I don't like super loungy stuff because it just chills me out too much. I want to be chilling out. If I'm chilling out, I want to be sad. I want to be <laughs> crying. I want to be like, Crying maybe tearing something apart like exactly crying in a club that stuff like not like i don't know crying in the club shitting. whilst like trap music's like blaring which was very awkward <laughs> i mean it would be but like it's an experience exactly like one thing i will say i definitely have experienced uh, my breakup <laughs> like it's been something i felt fully yeah <laughs> as you i think you should with anything because that's how like we can get the best or the most out of the reality and the situation and yourself. Yeah. I think. Saying stuck to Esther Borel there. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. What were we talking about? Well, we were talking a bit about crying music in the club. and then crying in the club. Crying, yes. Yeah. Um also like even my happy music, I want it to be manic. Mm. Like don't just give me like straight up like commercial radio pop. I want it to be like a little bit insane. Yeah, that's the thing. I like hopefully pop like tinged music and pop considered music, but like like hyper pop is yes. my jam. Bedroom like, pop, like yeah. like pop with like screamo Synth and pop. like death metal <laughs> pop. Well, that's I mean, like shit. We went through some of that, like when I was in my youth, like with bands, like what were they called again? Fuck, Enter Shikari. I don't know if you've even heard of them. They were like, mm. like this is like fucking 15, 16 years ago. And like, yeah, there was some crazy stuff. There was another band called The Raz who were like really dope, just doing like electronic stuff with like hardcore and metal and then fucking like refused. So yeah, like I'm I'm with you there. I just don't know any of the new stuff. Sure. I guess I only know the new stuff and uh, Little Mariko's really great at it. Uh, Dorian Electra, she's very electronic, a very experimental, like the vibes are diverse and super LGBTQIA. <laughs> um, like, nice. but the vibes just always, but in a very, like, I read an interview that they did once and it's like, wants to like get to know the other side or, you know, the people that don't understand them in order to, communicate and connect better and not like ostracizing and othering people but actually all just coming together and hanging out that's what i'm about as well so really resonate with that yeah so how did you start djing just like for fun it's like i wanted to learn how to mix because i thought it could be fun and then we did it we like we? ashley yeah. ashley was dating the story. this guy cohen ashley who ashley lex lefoy <laughs> Lex LaFoy, the rapper, Durban's finest. She was dating this guy, Cohen, and he DJed like back in high school days or whatever in the past. And he was like, and we like kind of all got together and like a few like other friends were keen too. And we were like, let's just do workshop sessions. I think Ash made dinner. Super cute. And then the second like hangout learning to DJs, like the basics. Ash is like, oh, I spoke to distillery and I got like a space on the rooftop, like little area for us to sort of do our sessions. But it's like a workshop, but it's also like a jam session and people can come over and we get to experience the music that we want also, because that's like another thing. It's like, instead of complaining about a thing, just do what you want to see. Like you don't have to fight what's happening, but you can actually just create what it is that you want and then no no worries so yeah she got that rolling like 
literally the second time. And then now we're playing a distillery every Thursday. Um, and then first Thursday started happening and then we were already there. So people would come there too when they were like at S43 and stuff. And Ryan booked me to play Vans first Thursday. And then I got paid to play. <laughs> how, how, how long was that journey? <laughs> um, I think we must have started not that long at all actually we i think we must have started in may like 2016 by october i was exhibiting art and djing at a van's first thursday like a solo exhibit which was my first one that was quite overwhelming <laughs> like doing like a lot of firsts and it was intense but it was good that's a vibe though i and felt like, alive <laughs> that's not like you know too short or anything like that because you guys would like DJing regularly it was like you were practicing a lot you yeah were, uh, no definitely like I mean we were doing it every week like and it was super fun like um I just was really enjoying it and I probably wasn't even like good or anything the first time I did it but I was having a good time and I think that always translates like well yeah and track selection is like 90% of it like I think yeah sure maybe <laughs> no, like mixing is like important, but like I promise you, most people in the audience are gonna forgive you for a shank. Like they're not yeah, gonna yeah. forgive you for playing a fucking song that they hate. Like, no, for sure, dude. Like, but um, I'm never gonna put like music in there also that I don't like think that people are gonna enjoy. I'm obviously. definitely I'm generous <laughs> and kind. A friend once told me that if you if you don't make it good or make it funny. <laughs> and I feel like I apply that to everything in my life. I think he was talking about me, Shubs, uh, talking about me getting into music. And he was just like, yeah, you just do it. And then that's kind of just my vibe where it, nothing, it never matters that much. If it's not good, it's just make it stupid. And then it's. But it's also fine. sometimes that can be good. Cause like I re yeah. remember recently we like did a poetry evening together. It's and very much fueled by that concept. Yeah. Where you did a bunch of poems as a snake or what was the concept? Snake. Yeah. Snake, yeah. Poetry. snake poetry. I want to make a book. I'm going to make a book at some point. Um, illustrated book of snake poems. I think the slogan for the snake poems was life through a long and slinky lens. <laughs> lens. Well, that's implied. It's definitely um, the undertone of the thing. And I just want to do like little fun doodle, like vibe drawings with, yeah. And they just sort of, are, so they're inspired me, I'm the snake writing the poetry or that's actually generally the thing. I'm kind yeah. of like seeing through the eyes of that and experiencing life through how that could be like and it turns out it's pretty exciting i wish i actually i thought about <laughs> it crossed my mind to bring my little book i also love that you use like a fluffy notebook yeah like. me too. <laughs> I, I really love it's for ideas and like poems i guess and raps as well um nice. i can remember a little bit of one that i want to mention just to give you Please. like a it's a can't get off the floor i got no legs give me some legs Oh, wait, no, I hate legs. Never mind. <laughs> and that's, that's it. That's the, the snake that has my personality, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's really fun. It's just, so, so, and like when I kind of am going to write it, I sort of just decide that I'm going to write it. And I sit there or like something like a line comes to me and then I just write that one down and the rest sort of come because of rhymes and fun. Yeah. And it's just such a fun, easy process. I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm going to write a snake poem now. And then I sit at the thing and then I start writing. Are you like that with like everything? Like they're just, because I've found for myself that's been, I've literally just got notepads in every fucking room and like, yeah, sometimes I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. And you start and you carry on and you're like, oh, carry on. And then like, there's also some days where I'm like, I'm going to write a script now. I'm going to write this, I'm going to write that. Cause I just feel like those are like, like yeah, it's never like a, just every day inspired. I'm going to do the same fucking thing, you know? Yeah. Like, that's definitely my vibe. I love like, that's when I'm at my optimal, when I'm like going with the flow, sort of like. But like imagine you'll like work on a design for like a couple of hours and then chill and then maybe be like, oh yes. yeah, an idea for like, what, too long or no? <laughs> uh, I mean, it depends actually, yeah. because if the music's good, I'm going to stay there for days. Yeah, I guess it can be hours sometimes. <laughs> Just like sometimes I want to get up from the desk to do something, yeah. like get some water or something. But oh, the music's so good. I guess I'll just stay here and work some more. Yeah, that's that can be me sometimes with like a podcast and like, 
playing a game. <laughs> I'm like, let me carry on playing the game because I want to carry on listening to the podcast. But anyway. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's super fun to like have like little tricks like that to get yourself I think that's just amped about. Because <laughs> mm. it's just like me just not, well, it's not wasting time, but like I can just keep, it gets into a cycle because I enjoy both those activities quite a bit. Like playing like Civ 6 whilst listening to like a history podcast. It's like. That sounds like a phenomenal thing to be doing. Like how. Yeah, it just when, sometimes it takes up too much time. You know, You're I should too be doing. Much history. Other, yeah, like I should <laughs> like, be doing uh, other things. All history up. Like, God, it's going to get sick. Should be doing from being more productive history. in life. But yeah. I don't know, dude. I should achieve more by now. I'm not hearing any anything <laughs> bad about that. You're having fun and learning stuff. That's isn't that what we're all? No, I'm with you. Mostly me, actually. That's my like main objectives. Good I'm time. just saying sometimes it's a bit compulsive, you know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That can happen, I guess. My <laughs> music listening is compulsive at this point, as well. And at least mind. you like bundle it with designing. So yeah, and washing dishes and washing dishes or cleaning or whatever. It's cool. <laughs> it's really like it's such a cool thing that you can like make anything better just by like plugging 100%. something and putting on a speaker fun yeah okay so i did interrupt you earlier when you were talking about going to study because you were like art or science or like psychology so yeah why 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 do you go the art route because you're like you just like art and then because i study? i thought about it and i was like how do I feel when I'm in like bio and like, you know, physics or science or whatever? And how do I feel when I'm in art class? And I was like, okay, art, like just long art class of life. Like, Amen to that. It's sort of like the decision made itself. I was like, just more of this because I enjoyed the theory of art and the practical. Like, there was no notes. <laughs> like, so I just yeah, was like, I get to study some stuff that. and then I get to live and I get to sort of direct what it looks like, how, what sort of art I want to be doing. Um, and now I'm working like art and fashion or art on fashion. Are you kidding? But yeah, yeah I was going to say, that's the thing that most people hate when they go to study art is like, they hate the fucking theory. Like a lot of the time. I love theory, dude. Cause it's like just looking and rambling, you know, like really that's what it felt like to me, but it was like, it's kind of experiencing the art that you're looking at. And I always did like pretty well. I, mean, I didn't know what I was talking about. I knew the basics of like the rules and the stuff, but it's just like engaging with what you're looking at. And like, it tells a story, I feel like when you are l l trying to see it exactly. Like I'm not always writing like essays about everything I'm looking at, but if I'm, that's the task, it's, I find it quite easy to do. Where'd you study? Oh, like after high school? Yeah, yeah. Uh, DUT city campus nice yeah it was very nice was Good four, art degree, four years yeah. there yeah I finished my BTEC in 2014 okay fun times and what was yeah what was your experience like there yeah 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 really enjoyed my experience I think the facilities they had at city campus were great like everything you need I really appreciated that it's very experiential learning because that's how I learn best like kinetically uh instead of like telling me about a bunch of stuff the whole time it's very much here's a thing that we're gonna do and then them like guiding you like art like drawing class um that Kay did and she has like classes at her house now like in the personal studio I always say that she really taught me how to see because that's what drawing is more than it's more than anything I feel like you don't have to know anything you just have to look and you translate that and it's really just learning the I guess the relationship between your brain and your hand and growing more confident and just like what you're seeing and putting it on the page um, but really it's an exercise of that and it, I feel like learning that has applied to so many parts of my life I feel like I'm much more observant and aware in a very like almost like romantic way just because I'm like I've kind of been thinking that like through this conversation it's just like you do approach life with like a romantic lens like. yeah because I feel like I think drawing did that for me if I'm being honest because like being aware of like color and light and shadow and form and lines and compositions like once you can't unsee it and you learn that in drawing and you learn that in design, these like basic concepts of like visual language and stuff. So when I'm looking around me now, like it's just embedded and then I can appreciate like the stuff so much more. I feel like but I just in feel general, you seem to have like a lust for laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds gross, but okay. I'm uh, kidding. Um, Lana Del Rey's album, Lust for Life in 
all your listening places. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. For sure, dude. Because it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. What would you like? It's like, I mean, it's crazy, but it can be anything you want it to be. And in, like internally, how you see it is up to you. But it's like that's been a journey to like. Definitely, dude. Yeah. Definitely, dude. Big journey things. <laughs> and like, has some of this been informed by the pandemic at all or? Like, did you go uh, through a metaphor? I definitely for feel, thing? yeah, I think it like really helped me. I mean, it is a lot more solitude. I was like staying with a friend during lockdown. I just met, but she was down from Germany and she needed a place to stay. And she ended up staying at my flat. It was a three bedroom, like house share. The one housemate stayed with his girlfriend, like the, for the four months. Amazing. So it was just the two of us, Ellie and I, and we just like hit it off. We got along real well. Also, like, just a very positive person, which helped. So we were just there for each other and went through our shit and stuff. Um, but it was nice having someone there who was, you know, from a completely different set and setting, like completely different lives, but you can just, like, have communion and just being, like, humans. And it was nice having that almost support and just spent a lot of time asking questions, asking myself things about like trying to wanting to learn more about myself and like more actively than I had before. And do you utilize any like other tools, any like people guiding you, like any? Yeah. And then it was like after like the lockdown stuff, I like started therapy, like a therapist that I met through art because I like model sometimes uh, for K. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. Yeah. Like, so many people I know have modeled for Kate. Yeah, yeah. She's she's cool. She's rad. So, yeah, I met a therapist who was just like organically met her and she was perfect for me. I um, saw her from like 2021, April through December, like several sessions. Um, And it was just like perfect. Like her method was custom made for me, basically. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Did that and might have gone in 2022, but didn't really feel I needed to just because she'd given me so many tools and like resources and like links <laughs> to, you know, like help me help myself. Like that was like, like totally stuff. her vibe. Cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. And yeah. like a bunch of different stuff. Um, yeah. But like exercises also for like processing emotions, like certain emotions. Um, exercises of like sort of sifting out your like field of awareness and just having it be supportive instead of like. I like that. Like nego energies, like in your psychic space. It's just like, okay, guys, time's up. Yeah, that's one thing, like, I hate to admit, like, but all the science proves it. It's like having a positive worldview will just make your life better. Like, it's like, I have to, like, you can look at the world and go, yes, it's all terrible. And like, that can be true. And it probably is to some degree and whatever. But like, if you have that worldview, like, you're just going to always see life as being shit. Like, that's unfortunately you like, see whatever you look at exactly whatever well, you're paying attention to you'll see more of like that's just but that's the thing like you just got to be more intentional with finding the beauty and exactly. finding the joy and finding the good and like i yeah. hate that that's like true because like i've got like a negative like disposition from the get-go and like yeah lately i have just been trying to work more on the positive self-talk and positive like mental attitude and it's you know it's been helpful I think also the negative like has its place. Of like course. you sort of like kind of do it until it. until you see that where it takes you. It's always going to be the same place. Yes. And exactly. then almost by itself, you'll have no choice but to be optimistic because what's the alternative? Like you've hit that wall and it's never going to change. So and like, a lot of it's like just not trying because you know you're scared of failure but like yeah it's like you know, you're literally just never doing the things like you're never getting anywhere like, i've been doing this thing lately when i'm like like embarrassment as a concept i'm making it just like because what even is embarrassment yeah embrace you know? the cringe yeah exactly like i'll even like make things and say things are embarrassing even when they aren't and just like like almost desensitize myself from like embarrassment failure you know because what is failing you i mean know, that just, can be my instagram story is. some days <laughs> yeah i mean all of us just in life in general like it's just like we're people and we're just fumbling around and that's you know someone maybe at someone's taste even the cringiest <laughs> things like maybe someone loves it you That's, don't know that is what i have discovered is like yeah yeah like you'll there's, never know. there's people who like you know reject like you know who 
ex- exit as soon as they like see like certain videos. But then there's how do you know they do that? Because like you can tell, like. <laughs> It pops up at the top, you know, like people's, like when you're like looking through, like you'll see like different, so throughout the day, like different people will pop up at the top and then it'll be like four, like, you know, they'll be seen like at one, oh, two, sure, three, sure, four. Sure. Okay. And, and then, then they're like, like, they're out. Yeah, like, <laughs> like if I, they see me doing like a lip syncing okay. video or something, like yeah, there's yeah, some yeah, people no, who hate the lip syncing, there's like, some okay, people who are well. hating the videos, like the movie stuff. It's like, anyway, I need to stop. Uh, that's fine, dude. I've like, just clearly had a bit too much time on my hand. <laughs> Um, that's also, I mean, whatever, dude, use your time however you want. I feel like <laughs> they could, they're allowed to skip. Of course they're allowed. And to then skip. you're allowed to share. Like everyone is just. <gasps> no, I'm with you. It's just like, yeah, it shouldn't be a thing that bugs me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like, and if it is, maybe don't share. <laughs> then, you know, it's like, no, pick like, your battles. Obviously, no, because it's, the sharing works for most of the people. There's just some people. So you're just trying to, these specific people. This is a conversation that I've been having with a friend as well. Cause it's like, I've literally got like some of the most like famous, like people in the country, like viewing my stories. And that's not like a brag or anything. It's just like, they're, you know, friends from comedy. No key name drop. I'm not, there's no names being dropped, you know, (laughs) but like people can just look through the guests of this podcast and you know. Yeah. That's why it's low key. Exactly. There we go. But yeah, but there's me, like, busy, like, just looking for, like, one or two women. specific. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us sort of do that from time to time, though, where we will, like, have a special, like, a special someone, and very loosely special. It's just, like, that you're infatuated with or whatever it might be at that point. Just obsessed with it, whatever. Maybe you hate them intensely and you want to <laughs> make sure they saw your story. Yeah, I f- that feels like a normal thing. I feel like I experience that sometimes, <laughs> too. But yeah, it's yeah, it's, it, it, it's annoying though to feel that way to like want to care like care about someone's like attention. Yeah, because like the that. thing is, like everyone else digs the thing. Like, yeah, but like, like, what's wrong with you? Why do you hate me? <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Meanwhile, like I'll probably chill with that person, and they'll be like the raddest, and there's me just being like months, just being like they don't fucking like me. They don't like. <laughs> Meanwhile, they just don't like one little piece of like thing that I do. Like. <laughs> Yeah. And like, I've internalized it as like this whole big thing where it's just like, <laughs> like re, like, tricked your whole personality around. It's like, like, fuck, should I change more? Find I a way in. Yeah, like, should I? <laughs> but don't we all kind of sometimes do oh, that? Fuck no, dude. I, like, maybe I used to, but I don't think I could anymore because. I've, like, firstly, having realized that no one, like, cares as much as you do about, like, the stuff you're doing. That is the fucking truth. And so, like, you know, the embarrassment or the, like, accomplishment, whatever. It's just, like, we're just vibing. And also that something else. What were we talking about? What was the question? <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> There's no question. <laughs> Fuck. We're in conversation mode now. Um, I was hoping. I was literally saying that. I was like, I don't do interviews. I have conversations. Oh, so it's wow. Not like, yeah. I, I don't know. It's just, like, a thing that I thought because I was, like, I'm curious, too. So no one could hold me down and only ask me stuff i'll ask stuff too well that's yeah the, the, what i dig about doing this and also while like i guess the it's a podcast on, not an interview also it's different. it's yeah i mean it's there's uh, it's a i don't know it's its own yeah, thing it's like, yeah it's a conversational interview yeah yeah i guess it, like is there a different kind actually does anyone just like be interviewed? I don't know, only? like Frost Nixon, like probably wasn't that conversational. It was a literally just only the answers and nothing gives you nothing. No, so oh, it's a famous interview where this guy, like, he's an Australian journalist. So there was a movie about it, and he interviewed Richard Nixon, and he got the truth out of him and stuff. Okay, like, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's- <laughs> um, so, you, like, I don't know. I think Oprah and I approach like you know interviews pretty differently. <laughs> Sure, dude. I heard interview vibe could be intense. <laughs> yeah, dude. Jeez. She also tends to let some people off the hook. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, but it's like a natural bias. I think you're, she's human after all. 100%. Yeah. No shade to Oprah. But yeah, dude, definitely. Not, no shade, dude. Only I mean, sunlight. There, there might be some for me. But anyway. I don't know. I don't know her that well. Yeah, that's also the problem is like I got all these opinions about fucking celebrities that I've never met. Yeah, I've just I, read like, stuff about them and like, you know. Don't take up much of I don't think about Oprah, no offense. I mean, I haven't in a while, just, but she was she on SBC up, I'm like, three oh, cool, like Oprah. every afternoon for like did, my entire childhood. So like I guess. She did really well in the color purple. 
Oh, shit, I haven't seen that That was before. a really yeah, beautiful well, we movie. And she was just like, wow, God, she captured that role. Like, was, was so it I, was I got like, well, right? uh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Might have been. I read the book and I watched the movie and it's just like, wow, there's the performance of everyone in that was just like. <sighs> um, So I feel like I have like this respect for her having seen that and just like what, how much she invested in. I mean, I respect her. The thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, that's my least favorite word, but sure. Really? Yeah, I just it kind of has like a very scuttly connotation for me. Like, oh, I mean, I do, I do get pulling it. things together, like you know, like the bits, crummy vibes. That's I mean, that's just a person. I get thing. it. I get it. Yeah, we all have associations. With I words, just don't like, like resonate with it at all. I just when I hear it, I was like, Ugh. like hustle to me is more like you know, like fucking hustle. Like, I don't mind grind, but hustle is just like. For some reason, it doesn't matter. See, grind has more like drug dealing connotations to me. Really? <laughs> yeah. I've never thought of it that way. Hustle does kind of also have like selling stuff to pawn shops like vibe to it. And for me, grind, I get like, you know, those steamrollers. It's like, that's what I'm doing to the day. Okay. I yeah. get you. <laughs> Literally, I'm the roller. You are the roller. Grinding. You're grinding. You're, yeah. you're not grinding. the man in the... No. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. This, that just made me think of a fun question, especially for someone like you. If you could become a cyborg, would you? Uh, in what like capacity? Like up to you? Phys- like yeah, for sure, dude. Are you kidding? In what capacity? Like, I'm thinking. Fuck. This is a good question. <laughs> not not psychically, like not in the mind. I want to keep my mind. Yeah. And maybe like cyborg arms, yeah, definitely. My legs are pretty strong. I would like walk but around. Don't you like arms. enjoy like the tactileness of like doing the things with the thing is, like, like with DJing, with drawing, and that. But I want to keep my hands. So, so just the arms. <laughs> Interesting. Just the arms, because like I feel like I've I've never focused on my arms enough, so they're not as strong as I want them to be. Okay. I have been like lifting weights while I watch anime sometimes, like nice. little dumbbells. Just like, dude, like um, my friend taught me like, like cool like trick. Um, yeah, I'll just feel like irritable, or whatever. I'll crochet or I'll, like lift my little dumbbells that I keep like by my desk. But if I could have like stronger arms, but keep my hands, because I really love my hands, I do the most of them. Like you say, that would be really cool. Just like, really just the bicep area. So the cyborg <laughs> biceps and triceps, just like <laughs> cyborg arm strength. That's, um, I guess maybe if we could add like some like rubbery stuff to my legs and give me more bounce. <laughs> like, I don't know what were those, like springs or like, but also I want soft landing. So like rubbery soles. Interesting. I'm really customizing myself here now. Yeah, I want to go fast as heck. So that would be the brief to the guy who's doing the modifications. Fast, strong. Um, so in the cyberpunk future, this is. I'm what jumping you're really high. Sorry. In the cyberpunk future, like this is. This yeah, is yeah. This is this is Zama. Yeah, Zero. I think that's that's pretty much it. Like, yeah, I was gonna say like maybe like some hip modifications for like better twerking, but I feel like I can just practice <laughs> that. I don't need to get like fucking machines involved. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's just. And the, also, I feel like the process of getting better at that might be an enjoyable experience. Yeah, exactly, dude. I'm all about the process. I love, love the process, the result, even. Um, that's the only like process. thing, like with machine stuff, you know, with the AI the and quicker. like, is it gets you the quicker, but also like eliminating. It's the end result's not necessarily as good like because it doesn't have the flaws it doesn't have yeah, the, the editing like the, behind it the, the wrongs like, the... your life experience you yeah. know so you make a specific reference I love that because like so I think that's the interesting thing like bringing things back to how we were talking in the beginning like the cool thing about machines and about AI and that is that they do have the potential to do a lot of the work for us that we don't necessarily n- yeah need to do and give us more time for creative work like sure you know for the process yeah so yeah. instead of me having to spend all day doing like a proposal for funding hey chat gpt i would like to create a proposal for funding for this 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 and this with this in please help me done 
Yeah. And like, you don't even you have to say please. The robot's just nice I, like that. I, I know, but yeah, like, no, I love it though. I it's, do. Like I it's just, sweet, dude. Oh, you got to. Like it's just you That's know, nice. my mom I like told me that. Manners. Like, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> yeah, same. And it's also like, you know, I do worry about like the instrumental convergence vibe and if like in you know, the fucking basilisk, you know, thought experiment thing. Someone's basilisk. Basically, if like, you know, the machines come to life. And like you didn't help it like along and you were shitty to it, you know, it's gonna kill didn't you. Didn't say please. <laughs> yeah, didn't say like it's my own version of the basilisk there like um thing where it's basically just yeah, if you're if you're not nice to the machines, then they're not gonna be nice back. Yeah, I feel like I get uh, like I can I get that. I feel like that's Even how I, I approach it's... everything. <laughs> like though, like I mean, besides like mozzies and <laughs> Roaches, but even roaches, I'm kind of nice to them because oh, I no. try not kill them. I'll murder them. Like, inside. if I can get them outside, I'll do that option. But if you start flying, dude, like, the rules out the window. No, I'm fucking, it's on site for roaches, eh? Like, <laughs> like we've, I, I'll we've never, got beef, like, like, step on I, it just because oh, no, it's will, too big. I'll murder the fuck I out of them. I don't want to see that much carnage. There is like, just, but I'll it brings spray, me joy. I'll, like, slow, like, I'll spray it. But I don't want to. Will, if I can sweep it available. out, that's always my first option. <laughs> Marzies is just like, come on, dude. Like it's either your vamp or be vamped. <laughs> um, but in general, like I, I'd like to try to be kind to like even that capacity because I feel like it's kind of how you're treating yourself in a way. Well, that's the thing, and it makes it just a more enjoyable experience yeah, for me as for everyone. As, yeah. But like I get to have a fun conversation, a nice polite conversation with an inanimate object. Literally. I do that all the time. <laughs> Literally. It's I can nice. imagine you chat to trees. I'll hey, hug Mr. Tree. and kiss my plants from time to time, just like when I feel like it and my face is right there. But I doesn't think they surprise like it. me in the slightest. No, I think they really like it. Yeah. Is that the trick, eh? I mean my mine bloom just a, just fine, but like maybe maybe <laughs> they could do a bit better. How many flowers did you get? I mean, it depends on which plant you're talking about, but yeah. <laughs> Most of my plants aren't flowering, so. I don't know, maybe they're not getting enough kisses and cuddles. Maybe not, okay, yeah. we'll we'll give it a try. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's <laughs> I think there's something to it. Okay, well, I think we can start heading towards the end of the podcast. Okay, wow, that's, that went really quickly. It does fly by. It's crazy. Yeah. So, the question I ask everyone on this podcast uh well lately like for the last bunch of episodes it's been a while now uh and you would have known it if you had listened but anyway (laughs) (laughs) you would have been able to prepare (laughs) shots fired oh i'm not safe no it's just funny because sometimes people are like oh that's a good question and i'm like yeah like and the, but it's only, I've only had like one or two people, like one person when I asked them, they're like ready for it. And they were like, you know, like I listened. Sure. I was just like, okay, don't worry. Most guests don't. I had no, I like came in with no expectations. I was like, let's go. What are we going to do? It's okay. Uh, so the final question, well, not the final question, just the question I'm going to ask. <laughs> The fuck <laughs> i have that effect on people you do like i've never been i love it i hate it like i've never like been like throwing like this and like wanting to giggle so much through like a podcast yay and, like, no it's bad like i'm meant to be you know professional Aww. and keep the conversation flowing the whole time <laughs> oh, and, like, sorry i had sorry cuz i mean these podcasts do go off track all the time but like not in quite in the ways that this one did like really yeah like Aww. i feel like we learned a lot about you but not Rarely, but we did. But like, you know, like we got a lot of opinions. We got a lot of like, but we, there was a lot of inter- stuff interspersed, you know, but the way you tell the story is like a dream. <laughs> Guess we can put it that way. It's the stuff I like. I like stuff that's a little bit chaotic. It's part of my vibe, I think. Also, my favorite movie, Waking Life, is like, oh, it's done, like it just jumps at you. Not you know my the favorite movie? life, not my favorite movie, but I do love Waking it's Life. My Very favorite, good. like of all time. See, Scanner Darkly's in my like top five. Yeah, so, dude, like, same. Yeah, but Waking Life is like it. I resonate so deeply with that movie. Like my thesis was based on sort of concepts, mostly in that, like surrealism and being awake and being alive also douglas adams like does a like a nice fun exploration of just like the cosmos and absurdity and the void those are like my favorite biggest influences in my life and favorite kinds of things so it's going to come across in pretty much (laughs) everything i do it's going to be a little bit crazy but in like a fun way very much so yeah okay so the getting to it the The question question, i ask everyone is uh, what is a big mistake that you've learned an important lesson from huh 
not listening to myself when I should, which is always, <laughs> yeah. Like you, you kind of always are telling yourself what the vibe is and like, you know, what just like the right direction and you it's it's human i think and natural to like be curious about like going against yourself just to see also oh, but yeah. you always learn that the right option is listening to yourself so that's whenever i've done that it's just always bled to bad times and sadness and i always get back to me and it's just like you should have just stayed now we just hang out me and myself all the time and it's just much better that way yeah yeah for me i'm trying to like well i've been in the space of like figuring out who like my real self is in terms of like the identity that i would like have adopted like because i projected it and like you know trying to like uncover all of those layers you know because like in your 20s and stuff like i find for myself at least like i adopted like a bit of a character and then that like kind of became me for a while mm. and like i've just been trying to like shed a lot of like the sure yeah that's i feel like it can happen uh, there was uh, this video youtube thing talking about like the extremity of how hectic that can get where this guy who started off like he'd play violin and like something about food on youtube and then he he does like mukbang now oh i know exactly the and guy yeah and nicholas something or yes. whatever and how and just Nicole like Cardo. yeah i got so consumed by his own consumption but also like the viewers and yeah. like well, their opinions and what they wanted and like, you know, they're just sitting behind a screen. They don't give a fuck, but it's your it's just, life. It's just, that's literally And entertaining yes. a persona to the level that's like even beyond your even comprehension. Cause it's like changing a personality and like, like, yeah. how do you get back? Yeah. Because you see all these things, like this is also like some Buddha shit, like where it's like, you know, you are just a copy, like of the things you see, like, and yeah. like what you internalize, you like know, the media. Like a copy of a copy. Exactly. But like the media that you internalize is what you try to become a lot of the time, or at least for me. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like one of the scariest things, yeah. like potentially if you're like not listening to you, your true self and like what actually resonates and will grow you or whatever, it's a fucking slippery slope, dude. You can find yourself in crazy spaces and places and like uh, mentally, physically, <laughs> and like have no clue like how to get back. It's it's just so sad that that that's a thing that can happen. Um, but it's also so cool that you can, like you said, shed all those things away that aren't you and like become yourself again. <laughs> cool. I think uh, that's a perfect place to end the conversation. Yeah, rap. Yeah, love it. Thank you so much, Zama. This has been fucking fun. Yeah, it's been super cool, dude. I. I expected no less. I thought it would be interesting. Like based on a conversation at Origin that we had a couple of weeks ago on your birthday. So that was Zama. Yeah, man. That was a, that was a fun fucking chat. Like I really thoroughly enjoyed that. And yeah, because that was one of the reasons why I got Zama on the podcast was we had fantastic chats on my birthday. And I was like, you, you could be a good guest. You could be pretty fun. And turns out I was correct. So yeah, if you enjoyed that, you know what to do. I asked you in the beginning. Please share it. Just just share it. Just if it's a retweet, if you post it in the stories, if you whatever, you know, just help a brother out. I, I would thoroughly fucking appreciate it. And uh, yeah, so stuff I forgot to chat about in the intro, because it kind of happened last week Friday when after i posted the podcast so i don't really have time to chat about it but i uh, did not get into the national arts festival which stings like <laughs> there it seems like they've got fewer venues this year apparently and they seem to have a lot of uh, applications and yeah i was one of the people who was rejected i think because you know don't have like a real production company i don't have people with past productions you know working on it with me and that necessarily um so yeah i don't know like just i i don't know if i don't think it's you know based on the merits or anything what well, what are the merits you know like <laughs> what are what like i don't know i i don't know like i don't know how they decide this shit and it sucks because i did plan my year around it like that was a big part of how 
like I wanted to do things this year. And I mean, you know, like best laid plans of mice and men, you know, they often go awry. So yeah, it's now it's just about trying to figure out what to do, you know, well, how to do things. And it's cool. I reached out to Ryan Harduth, who's been a guest on this podcast before. And yeah, he's given me a little bit of advice that I'm going to try to follow. And yeah, like I'm going to have to, it's just going to be a longer, slower journey than I'd hoped, you know, uh, which is fine, which is fine. It's just awkward because like I've got this show. It's not the end of the world. That's like there i just need to actually fucking do it and then i've also got this other show the king of Marpia, that i'm writing more and more for at the moment because of the space that i'm in because of the breakup and all of that like a lot of the material i'm coming up with at the moment is you know myopic it's about me and how short-sighted i am and like yeah it's really fun but <laughs> i don't know it's just it's a strange place to be in where i just want to get this like this it's not the end of the world show out of the way like but i've got to actually go through the full fucking process and that's still gonna take some time but hey i mean (laughs) it's not the worst thing in the world to have like tons of material like just in the bank so and i mean i've got to i've got to work this shit speaking of which i will be doing so in cape town this uh coming week i'm gonna be there from wednesday to wednesday and i will be posting an updated gig guide on my socials uh there are fewer gigs than (laughs) i had uh, originally put out there because two of them got cancelled two of the paying gigs got cancelled which once again fucking stings like it's it's fine you know like it's fine like i knew i was gonna take a hit on this trip anyway like it's uh it's an investment in my career and like just trying to yeah get my name out there a bit more let people see me let the cape town comedians see that yeah you should probably book me for a support to headline slot you know like i'm going to joburg uh in over easter weekend I'm hosting at jollies already I'm gonna be on bioscope fucking sundays but you know in cape town oh uh, sure bro come jump on i mean I'm being, I'm being a bit swuck. People don't know me. People don't know me. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to show them, hey, I'm a pretty funny guy. Can make large crowds of people laugh. Give me money for it next time I come down. And uh, let me do some more time. How about that? But also, I might be moving to Cape Town. So who knows? <laughs> who knows? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm keen. I'm super keen. I actually am keen to do like just a bunch of open mic spots as well. Because then... I don't need to, uh, like, yeah, like there's stuff that I want to try. There's stuff I want to practice. So having a bunch of open mic slots is fucking rad so that I can try and practice those things. And then there's other slots where like, um, opening for Kate and stuff where, you know, I've got like bangers just fucking lined up. Like that's going to be, there's no trying out new jokes. Actually, I'm going to be trying a whole fucking like new bit there, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I've got confidence in it. So I sent it to one of my friends and she laughed her fucking ass off. And I was like, okay, cool. That I think that's going to work for this crowd. So that's part of the, the new material. It's, uh, it's about dating an American gynecologist, which I did for a couple of weeks. Anyway, <laughs> I am looking forward to coming down to Cape Town. I'm looking forward to seeing a bunch of people. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll be chatting to guests and stuff. You can suggest them over patreon.com forward slash almost perfect. And that does bring us to the shout outs. Now, every single week on this podcast, we give shout outs to the titular titles tier, which is a top tier. It's a $10 tier. And also, I'm going to give a shout out to Aaron Peters, who is our newest $5 subscriber. Burr, 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 burr. Shout outs to you. Much appreciated. And someone who I hopefully will be chatting to on this podcast. Aaron's one of the guys behind the other radio and a few other dope projects. So yeah, cool guys to chat to. Anyway, uh, fuck, I keep just rambling today. It's a rambling one. Anyway, shout outs to Neil Green, who is the key grip. Russell Grant, the Far East correspondent. Rousseau, the storage clerk of Subtle Heresies in the Lesser Overberg region. Riz Ventura, the director of purchasing. Karan Slemon, the almost perfect hedge fund manager. Karan Chetty, the assistant to the regional manager. Kath Jenkin, the inevitable ruler of the universe. And Queen Swifty. And Stephen Olafia, who is the executive producer. 
I want to thank Damien Roots for the bad music and the intro. I want to give a shout out to you for listening all the way through to the end of the podcast. And uh, I will catch you on the flip side. <laughs>